Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with another five cards, one stamp set video, but this one's actually one stamp set and one die. Um, I recently picked up the Reverse Confetti Huggable stamp set as well as the Falling Hearts die and I wanted to kind of use them in combination with each other and I figured if I used them all on a set of five cards it would give you some different ideas for the stamp set as well as a die set and you could kind of see some of the versatility or the ways you might be able to use something similar from your stash. So to keep things simple, I'm actually going to use the same sentiment and the same die cut and stamping and everything for it. So I'm going to stamp the sending warm hugs onto a black banner that has some stitched die cuts. It's from Cat Scrappiness and I'm going to white heat emboss it. And then I'm going to do this for all five cards. So I just took a bunch of black banners, cut them all out at once and made those ready to go. Some, um, because the I didn't center it on the banner because I knew I wanted to come from the left or the right. I made some such that they could come from the left side of the card and some from the right side of the card. So for my first card, I wanted to keep it real simple. So what I decided to do was just die cut the die three times, stack them up and do a white on white look because if you stack up the die cut, it adds a lot of dimension and it can give a really nice look but in a clean and simple sort of way. I did color all of the critters with my Copic markers, but I'm not going to show that in the video. I'm kind of just focusing on just showing you a couple different card ideas as opposed to um, Copic coloring tips. So here I'm going to create an ink blended background and this is going to be one of those two for one cards. So it makes it even more worth it to spend all the time to make a beautiful ink blended background because I'll actually get two card backgrounds from it. So I am using, let's see, uh, Fired Brick. Sorry, I forgot the name for a minute there. Fired Brick and Abandoned Coral and then picked Raspberry. I was a, was a little unsure how these would blend. The Abandoned Coral is a very like orangey pink as, you know, coral is. Um, and the Fired Brick is a dark red, but it does have that orange tone to it too. And I think that's what allow them to work. The picked raspberry into the abandoned coral was probably like the hardest part of the blend. Like these two fired brick and abandoned coral blend really beautiful. It creates a really nice ombre as you can see there. And then the pink is much bolder, but I actually really liked that choice. Like I liked having that uh, sort of pop of color. I mean, there's all color, but just like that uh, more boldness at the end, I think it kind of helped the panel to stand out and look a bit more interesting. So once I finished applying ink to the background, I am then going to spritz it with some Sukuneko Shimmer Spritz and put that aside to dry. Once it's all dry, I wanted to die cut down my panel. I was starting with a piece of cardstock that was the exact size of the cover of an A2 size card, so five and a half by four and a quarter but I wanted it to be five and a quarter by four. So there was like a little border around it because again, I'm gonna use all of the pieces. So here I'm gonna to attempt to center the die cut on my ink panel because I'm going to use the positive, like you know, what, it, what it cuts out and the negative pieces. And I'm going to use an extra white panel, although you could of course just use the colored one to help me make sure that I place the other, the sort of the negative pieces correctly. I'm also going to stack my die cuts again here. I think that it really adds a little bit of extra something, something. So I will, you know, pick a set, a little set of critters to go with it. And then I will, you know, create that double layer there. And that'll be it. Another pretty simple card and the same thing here, but I think mixing it up, and using the die cut with like a variety of colors or using the negatives and positive parts of the die cut allow you to get a bit of a different look. So I want to use my die cut as a stencil as well. And so I use some removable glue dots to tape my card front close and spraying directly onto the card base. And this is actually the negative part of the die. So the die makes like a frame, but I'm just taking that inside piece and I'm going to spritz over and use that as a stencil. Again, just to create something a little bit different to help you sort of think outside the box with your dies. You know, the obvious thing would be to use just the regular die as a stencil. And I think that would look great too, but this is just something a tiny bit different. 
So that's a black shimmer spray from Tattered Angels. I don't even know if you can get Tattered Angels spray anymore. I linked up something similar in the video description, but I'm just, you know, using my stash. And I use an old uh, packaging, like an old box and that I cut to kind of contain my spray a bit there. Okay, so I want to create a shaker card too, because I think that dyes as shakers or like, you know, big background dyes work great for shaker cards. Um, but I wanted to do something a bit different. So here I have attached my transparency directly to one white die cut. Then I'm going to layer that over several more of the die cut to make the shaker part. So it's nice and thick and that the little sequins, I want them to only go between the hearts. I don't want them to go behind the hearts. I just, just for something a little bit more different, fun, and so that not everything collects in the bottom. So I've layered up like three or four layers of the white die cuts and put it on some black cardstock. Then I'm going to put in all of the sprinkles and I'm going to have to be a bit more strategic with how I place them. Usually if I was making a simple shaker card, I kind of just like dump them in the center and they'd get all mixed up as I shake them. But here... I have to kind of be careful because some of the hearts are a little bit big and they won't move around as much in the shaker. So I made sure to put a little bit of each of um, the colors all throughout. And I will link which sequins I use. They're from Cat Scribe and she's got a lot of great choices there. Then I decided to put a red background. Originally, I thought I was going to be able to use the fox on this card. And I never, I love the fox from the stamp set the little um, mommy and baby fox or daddy and baby fox, but I, it just never worked with the colors. And uh, these are, you know, could be Valentine cards, but I don't think they have to be because there's, you know, other than having hearts on them, the sentiment doesn't say happy Valentine's Day or anything like that. So I might send them for Valentine cards, you know, um, but Valentine's Day is either tomorrow or going to be past by the time I post this. And again, here I am trying to use the fox because I'm like, I really, really want to use the fox. He's so cute. Um, but for some reason, I just don't feel like he like pops off the card enough. I think that I went with the bear here because I colored the bear's heart in this sort of like uh, magenta color that I just felt like um, stood out a bit more than the orange foxes. Okay, so once I had it all sprayed and I lifted up the mask, it looked cool, but it just like didn't feel quite defined enough. Like I wanted the edges to be more clear. So I had to improvise, but what might look cool is doing like a little bit of inking around the edge of the stencil. And I might try that in the future, but I wanted to do something a little bit more simple since I'd already removed the mask and I wasn't sure. Um, so what I did was I used a black pen to make it look like there was a stitching detail all around the stenciled areas. And I actually really like how this came out. I think you could also do like a solid black line, just trace all of them and that would look really cool too. But if you ever just feel like your stenciling needs a little more something to make it pop, especially when you're using the spray mists, which aren't super solid, um, I would suggest trying that little bit of stitching detail or a little bit of inking detail. I am popped up most of my critters and sentiments and instead of using foam tape and I just mentioned this although people who watch my channel know I just use layers of cardstock so like all those scraps that I created with all this die cutting I am going to be able to use those to pop up my critters by just like layering them together I hope that makes sense how I try to turn that into foam tape but it's not foam tape it's just layers of cardstock so with the inking, it got a little bit messy. And so I'm just taking my Tombow Mono eraser here, a sand, sand eraser, and trying to sort of buff out some of those details, or some of those little, I'm sorry, not details, <laughs> some of those little mistakes. I also have this like really fine eraser pen um, from, I think it's Faber-Castell. I'll try to find it and link it, but like it's a really tiny pointed eraser, which is pretty cool because it means that I can get into really small spaces and it has this nice brush on the end that allows me to brush off anything that um, without smearing the ink further. So um, it's like, a, uh, like hard bristles. So any hard bristle brush would probably do a similar job. A soft bristle brush might sort of drag the color a bit more. Okay, so I'm ready to finish off all my cards, but 
I, instead of finishing off each one as I create it, something that I like to do, and I do this sometimes when I create like a whole big paper pad, is at the very end, I will embellish all of them at once. So I've taken out my enamel shapes. I have a lot of enamel hearts in my collection, but none of the enamel hearts match the color of heart that I colored that bear or the bear's heart. And so I picked up those arrows from uh, Create a Smile and I'm gonna use those and I'm just going to put like three arrows down and then across to add a bit of interest. But a lot of the other cards, I'm just gonna embellish with some hearts. And this is, you know, to give it a nice finishing touch. And also I have so many heart enamels that I need to use them up. And so that's kind of part of the idea is like, you know, this is a new stamp set and a new die, but trying to mix it with some old supplies so they get better use, like the, that Tattered Angel spray from a decade ago and these um, enamel heart stickers that are a little bit more recent. I am going to generally try to create visual triangles. So the triangle though, I want generally for my little critters to be inside the triangle so that the triangle goes through them. And as you sort of, your eye goes from one heart to the other heart, it sort of stops on the critter and draws more attention to the critter because I think that the critter is where your eye is going to be drawn to begin with. But then by creating that visual triangle around it with your embellishments, it further creates that idea. And um, I didn't have very many of these black ones, but I really liked how they um, popped off the colored backgrounds. And so I'm going to use them as much as I can. And I'll just kind of do something similar for the last couple cards. So that is it for my five cards, one stamp set and one die set video here. I hope that it's given you some ideas and some new ways of looking at your stamps and dies and maybe you have something in your collection that you think would work out well with these ideas anyway thank you so much for watching excuse my rambling and have an awesome day bye